Hey, beautiful soul. You're listening to the Rising into Mindful Motherhood podcast, your weekly dose of fertility wisdom. I'm your host, Dr. Katie Wood. I'm a barefoot mama bear, pharmacist, and integrative fertility coach. This is your go-to podcast for all things to naturally nourish your fertility, embody womb healing, and reclaim your feminine power to accelerate your path to pregnancy. My expert guests and I will be having intentional conversations to discuss the many facets of a thriving, fertile foundation, natural wellness, and how we grow and transform as women on our journey to motherhood. So let's dive in, shall we? Hello and welcome to Rising into Mindful Motherhood. I am so happy and excited to have you here today. And today, this episode is going to be about me basically relating a very personal situation that I went through and relating it to how we can move through our fertility journey really in a more disempowered state. And it actually brought me back to how I was moving through my past fertility journey. And it dawned on me like, oh my gosh, it's a different situation, but I am in the same place, the same disempowered, desperate place that I was in when we were trying to get pregnant. So Anyone who is a dog or an animal lover, animal owner, you are going to resonate with this. If you don't like animals, this might be a little hard for you to kind of see how they relate to each other. But anyways, so basically we got back from vacation at the end of April and my older, bigger dog was having trouble with her hind legs and She had already had surgery on one of her knees, I mean, gosh, five years ago, something like that. She's a bigger breed. She's a St. Bernard Rottweiler mix, so these things can happen. So we just thought it was, you know, she either re-hurt her previous surgery leg or it was like a new injury. We didn't really know what was going on. And to top it all off, she hates going to the vet. So... Yeah, we didn't know what was going on. The vet put her on some pain meds, put her on a couple weeks of rest, and we weren't seeing any improvement, which wasn't typical. You know, in the past, she would start limping a little bit and we'd give her some pain meds and rest and it would improve. And things were actually starting to get worse. We were having to use the sling to really lift her hind legs up so she could get around And it really got worse off from there. She wasn't really eating so much. So I was diving headfirst into Google rabbit holes, just searching to find anything that I could do to help her. And when I say ruminating thoughts, like it's all I could think about, right? Just how trying to get pregnant, wanting to get pregnant is all you can think about. It's it. That's it. It's on your mind 110% of the time. It's on your mind trying to figure out how you can get pregnant, what you can do to get pregnant. So that's literally all I was thinking about is what's wrong with her? What can I do to make it better? What do I need to do to help her get better? When I caught myself doing this, I remember that I had been in this situation previously, but I was younger and I wasn't in a place where I could do whatever it took to save them. And one of these dogs from my younger life with my family growing up, he wouldn't move out of his doghouse. So I sat in the doghouse with him all day long, waiting for my dad to get home. So we could take him to the emergency vet. We took him to the emergency vet. He had swallowed something. It was causing a blockage. 
and they could do surgery, but it was a very small chance that he could survive. And one of my parents decided that we wouldn't forego the surgery and we had to put him down. And I remember feeling a sense of loss of control. You know, I couldn't pay for it. I wasn't in any place to do that. And I couldn't quite understand why we wouldn't at least do everything that we could. And it was really sad and heartbreaking for me to lose him in that situation, sitting with him all day and then having to put him down. And then fast forward, I had his brother actually ended up getting cancer in his leg. And the solution to that was to amputate the leg, which obviously is not ideal. He was an older dog, nine or 10 years old. And, you know, it's, it's almost, it's like such a similar situation, just like when you're trying to conceive and, and just like in, in all things in life, we really don't have control. Control is an illusion. I think that we like to think that we have control. I like to think that I have control at times, but this was another situation that really brought me to my knees. And it was like, no, Katie, you don't have control. And it's scary to feel control or the sense of control like leaving your grasp. So I had noticed the patterns that I was going down with all these ruminating thoughts with this like endless searching, what can I do to help her? And since I was brought back to these two previous situations, I decided to do an inner child healing meditation. And what I found was interesting. What came up for me was feelings that I had failed them, that I didn't do enough to save them. And again, I didn't like that feeling of not having control. And I left that meditation with a different perspective. And I was able to actually dissolve the story that my mind had created around those situations that I was a failure. And the shift in my perspective was that I actually comforted them and I loved them and I gave them some extra peace in their final moments, days, weeks, months for one of my dogs. And I was able to leave feeling some inner peace after doing that meditation that death is sad, but it doesn't have to be quote unquote bad, right? I feel like in society, we can think that life is good, death is bad, and among other things. And it's really their their spirit and their soul leaving their physical body, but I know that they're still with me. So being able to go into that meditation, see what story my mind was creating around it, and then shifting that perspective, which is actually something that very commonly happens to us while we're in our fertility journeys. A lot of times our fertility journeys are the first situation where we feel like our back is against the wall and there's nothing we can do. We feel desperate. We feel frustrated. And a lot of times it's because we created stories around situations that happened when we were younger. And a lot of other times it can be survival mechanisms, survival patterns, conditioning from our parents or society so I'm I'm sharing this really because this meditation is a meditation that I take my clients through and I was able to use it in a different uh, situation and it was able to help me. And I just think it's it's really important to understand that we all have underlying traumas and wounds and they're affecting our flow of energy.
in our bodies and it can affect how we lead ourselves in our fertility journey, how we lead ourselves in the final weeks or days of a pet who's suffering. So the situation ended up getting worse and worse, right? Her appetite was not there. I I had to do anything and everything to get her to eat. And honestly, at this point, she was probably just eating to appease me. So, you know, do we x-ray? Do we not x-ray? If the x-ray shows something, are we even going to be able to do anything about it? Lots of questions of what is the right thing to do? Do we put her down? Do we keep pushing through, trying to do whatever we can to comfort her and bring her back into health? And sitting with those questions, I knew that I couldn't live with myself if we A, let her down, or B, let her suffer any longer without exploring the x-ray first, right? What if there was a even a 1% chance of it being something that we could do something about? So what I did is I actually brought it through my intuitive fertility framework that I have embodied throughout my lifetime to navigate challenging situations using my intuition. And I share this framework with my clients. It's there to help you utilize your intuition, what your body's speaking to you to move through challenging situations so you can move through them in alignment. So when you come out on the other side, you feel good about it. It's when you can move through through your fertility journey in alignment, you're moving with your desire, not against it. You're moving on the path of least resistance. And yeah, so we did end up having to put her down. The x-ray showed that she had cancer in her right hip and, you know, she just wasn't in a good place. And so we had to make that decision. And as sad as it is, right, this is a sad situation. We are able to feel peace that we did what we could for her and that we made the right decision for her, for our beloved pet. So all this to say, it 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 really just reminded me of how life is, right? And what we do have control over and what we don't have control over. We don't have control over when we get pregnant. We don't have control over when it's time for our pets to leave us on this earth. What we do have control over is how we respond to situations and how we make choices, right? I could have made a choice out of fear and even really out of selfishness. And I could have said, nope, I don't want to put her down. I want to see how she does or whatever it may be. But instead, I was able to intuitively feel in to what was the best choice for her without responding and reacting from fear. You have control over being able to build out that conscious awareness and circuitry within your body. So you can move through all things, all facets of your fertility journey with ease. Nutrition, lifestyle, exercise, sleep, supplements. You're going to be able to just, it's going to be easy. It's not going to be hard. It's not going to be like, oh, I have to eat 
a high protein breakfast with fats because that's what I need to do for my hormones. No, you're going to be in a place of this is what feels good. When I fuel my body this way, I feel better, right? It's not going to be, oh, I have to exercise because I have PCOS and this is what I'm told I have to do. You're going to want to exercise in a way that feels good to you because you feel those endorphins after. You're feeling better physically, mentally. So all of the choices that you make are going to be leading with your desire, leading with your intuition, and they're going to feel good and they're going to be easier and easier to do and soon it's it's not even it's it just happens automatically the way that you you are living your life on the way to becoming a mother (laughs) so all this to say it is my birthday week I am turning 35 and I am not a believer and I don't subscribe to when you turn 35, your fertility drops off a cliff, okay? I don't subscribe to that at all. Women being put into a one-size-fits-all box, that's not how it works. We are all bio-individuals. And hey, there's a chance that we're going to be starting for our second child this year, maybe next year, maybe the year after maybe even a third child. I don't know. I don't know what it looks like for us, but I do know that I'm not over here. I'm 35. Oh my gosh, we need to get started right now. My eggs are getting old. They're dying. I only have so many eggs left. No, not at all. Not even the slightest bit. Because I know that if having another child is on my heart, then it's mine. It's already mine. It's on there for a reason. So I'm having an excellent 35 plus and thriving fertility sale this week on my signature program, Embodied Fertility Mastery. And in this, you are going to be able to lead an embodied fertility journey. Tap into your intuition. So making decisions is easy. You don't have to look outside of yourself to figure out what is the next best step for our fertility journey. Should I do this? Should I do that? I had someone in my Facebook group ask the other day, should I do surgery for my endometriosis or should I do fertility treatments or supplements first. If you have found yourself in a situation like that, where you have to ask others what you should do, you need this program. You need to be in this supportive, nourishing container because the only person who knows what is right and aligned for your fertility journey on your way to motherhood is you. You're going to be able to sit with those questions, feel into your body, and decipher what is right for you. And I'm telling you, making decisions for things that are aligned for you is going to accelerate your path to pregnancy. Making decisions because your doctor told you or some other woman that you don't even know on the, on the internet said, I did that and I got pregnant. That is taking you farther and farther and farther away from what you want to have a baby and to be a mother. It's taking you farther and farther away, right? So here you are, point A, you want point B to have a baby, to be a mom. When you are following other people's recommendations, when you are aligned with your intuition and your desires and you're leading in that way, closer and closer and closer and closer until it is yours. 
And of course, inside this program is the confident conception method. This method has gotten me pregnant. I was able to cancel my fertility specialist appointment. It has gotten my dear, dear client, Elizabeth, pregnant after nine years of trying with PCOS and insulin resistance. It had gotten my client, Dory, pregnant when she had a luteal phase defect, seven to eight day luteal phase. Also another client, she was in her 40s and she was told there's no way she could get pregnant naturally. She gave birth to her baby boy, I think it was last summer. And now she's coming to me and saying, am I crazy to say I want to have another one? So many women, so many illogical pregnancies are happening in this container. And for this excellent 35 plus and thriving fertility sale. This sale is a jaw dropper, a panty dropper, I'm saying on Instagram. It legit is. And the only women who are going to have access to the special pricing and bonuses are the women on my email list. So if you're not on my email list, I'm going to be dropping a link in the show notes It's going to get you on my email list and it's going to give you my free womb meditation. Okay. You get something free and you get on my list. You can check out the details that are dropping this week for the sale. And I cannot wait to see the women who are ready to step back into their power, ready to reclaim their feminine voice, their feminine intuition on their path to motherhood because they know that it is theirs, even if it's just a whisper that you know that it is yours. If you want it to be solid, like to your core, come into this program. I can't wait to see you. And if you have any questions, reach out to me on social media. All of my links are going to be in the show notes on my website, happynourishmotherhood.com. And I love you all. I will see you in there. Have a beautiful week. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Rising into Mindful Motherhood podcast. If this episode resonated with you or gave you an aha moment, stop what you're doing right now and write a review. This simple act of kindness helps me get this podcast out to connect with as many women as I possibly can. I also have a special offer. If you send me a screenshot of your review, I will take $250 off one of my premium coaching containers. Let me know what resonated with you the most and why. So connect with me and my free Facebook community or tag me on Instagram. You'll find both listed below. Thanks again from the bottom of my heart for tuning into this episode and I'll see you next time.